Welcome to Risky Fitness and what may be the absolute worst night to possibly try and do this. So it is July 3rd, which means that every moron in my neighborhood is putting on their own fireworks display and uh, my dogs are not having it. So you know what? There's going to be some barks in here. <laughs> I'll do my best. Anyway, so I kind of spaced out on this one. I wanted to do this a while ago, a retro arch net play tutorial. And I want to throw a disclaimer at you here before I get started. I have all the steps down, but I couldn't get this to actually work in the real world. So that's something I wanted to let you know about. This is all just theoretical. You're going to have to tweak it and play with it yourself. If you have questions, you can ask in the comments. But for the most part, I got up to a point that I couldn't go any farther. So I hope you'll do better than I did. Anyway, there's two things you have to know, how to join and how to host. But before you even start that, there's two things you're going to want to look out for. I'm going to show you in the settings real quick here. If we go down to Netplay, we go to Host. I want you to look at this number you see on the screen, the TCP port 55435. That is the TCP port that RetroArch uses for Netplay. You're going to have to go into your router and open up that port. Now, if you don't know how to do that, take a look at your wireless router. If you purchased it yourself, go on the manufacturer's website, look up the documentation for the router. It should be super easy to find. It's usually under support and the documentation, usually super easy. Now, if your router was provided by your ISP, call your ISP and they'll walk you through it. Good luck. Need I can't it. do this here. It will be way too much material to cover. Just know you need that port 55435 triggered or forwarded on your router. Boom. Now, number two, if you have antivirus software, that might block it. You may have to configure your antivirus software to allow the connection. That's probably where I got hung up. I wasn't comfortable tweaking that just for this because I'm not really using it in the real world. It was just for tutorials. So you may have to allow that through your Windows firewall and or your Norton, Symantec, ESET, McAfee, God rest his soul, whatever you got. With all that out of the way, in theory, if you would like to host the game, you see the start net play host, that option is useless. You need to first load your content. So I'm gonna load Super, I'm sorry, I'm gonna load Street Fighter 2 Turbo, one of the greatest games ever on the Super Nintendo. I'm gonna give that a second to come up. All right. We got our game running. Now, once the game is running, that's when you start your net play. So we're gonna go back out to the main menu here, and we're gonna go to net play. I'm gonna host. Now this leaves things really super duper simple for you. All you have to do is hit this start net play host and it will start a host for you. You do have some options, but start that and boom, waiting for client, you join as player one, port mapping successful. I'll be sure when I edit to make sure you can't see my public IP because I don't want anyone doxing me or anything like that. Now I have noticed that this is a little unreliable. Refresh, refresh, net play host list should show everybody who is currently running a game, and this is me right here. Uh, RetroArch195, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So what does that mean? It means that I'm hosting and waiting for someone to join my game. Now there's a few caveats that you should know about this. Number one, you have to be running the same RetroArch version. The same, number two, the same core. Number three, the same exact ROM. That's super important. It has to match exactly. So it's highly recommended that everybody make sure that the ROMs they are using are in the no intro format and just check ahead of time and make sure that both you and the person you're playing with have identical ROMs. All right. Now that's a super easy way to host. There are a few options that you can use. You can actually make your session anonymous so that people can't see it here in the list. Uh, yeah, you can turn this publicly announced off. Now, if doing that obviously adds a little bit of security, but the caveat is then you have to have uh, a server name for the person to join. And you can actually call it whatever you want. I'm going to stop the Netplay host for a second here. You can actually call it whatever you want. So if I go to Netplay and I go to my network options, server address. You can set this arbitrarily to anything you want and it'll work. I did test that piece out. 
and then you can put a password on it if you want to make it extra super duper secure. All the rest of this stuff, you are not going to want to touch. You don't need to worry about it. Not a big deal. Nothing to be concerned about. So that's easy enough. So if you want to host it that way anonymously, you're going to have to give the other player, obviously, your host name and the password, and then they'll be able to connect to your system and, help and play with you. In theory, of course. Now, the other piece, and the other important piece, is how to join. And quite simply, just like we looked at, right? So we will go to the Netplay host list, and if it's here, all you have to do is just pick the person that you want to play with. It probably won't let me play with myself. And it's going to try, but you can see I don't have the same ROM as this person. These are most likely people who are waiting on somebody else to come and join their game. Now, if you want to join a game that is not public and not in the list, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to go to Connect and Netplay Host, and it's going to ask you for that server address, that arbitrary name they gave it. You'll put that in, put in the password, and bing, bang, boom, providing that both your firewalls have that port open, and it's not being blocked by your software, you should be good to go. Some internet security providers, or internet service providers, I should say, might block it. You never know. So it's kind of, you know, you're rolling the dice a little bit. I'm doing my best to edit out these barks. That's really all there is to Netplay. It's pretty simple if you can get it to work. If you can't get it to work, keep trying, plug away, you know, look at your Windows firewall, look at your security software that you're using on your PC if you're running a PC. If you're doing this on another device like a smartphone or a Pi, you're probably going to have an easier time. Unfortunately, I don't have a Pi connected right now to play with. So I just did the best I could just with my laptop and desktop PC. And I kind of went through the instructions. I kind of hit a brick wall, but you probably won't, providing that you open everything up to what you're supposed to do. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful. I'm going to try to get at least two tutorials out a month because I'm noticing as I look at my channel, the tutorials are just destroying the Let's Plays in terms of views, view time, everything. So I really want to get this channel monetized, get to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 minutes of watch time. And to do that, I need your help. Once I do it, I'm going to do some really, really, really cool stuff. I will have a budget for the channel, and I'll be able to build hardware out. I can buy a camera. I can do a lot more cool stuff, and I'm going to do some giveaways. But i got to get to that point first. I need that 1,000 subscribers. I need that 4,000 minutes of watch time. And then I need a few weeks to put that money away and start doing really, really, really cool stuff for the channel. So help me out with that. Hit that subscribe. Hit that like. Leave a comment. Tell your friends, make sure that people come to Risky Business, check out my videos, and until next time, game over.